What's up, my good people? Welcome to the Fight Up Show, man. It's been a long time today, but we finally got it right. But uh, welcome to the show. You know, in this show, we have to bring entrepreneurs and CEOs to get the, the mindset, just to get people's mindset about success. And today, man, I have an awesome room packed today. We're going to have an awesome conversation to have. Um, our special guest today, Mr. Dan Smith in the house ooh, today. Ooh. I got, ooh, ooh. I got yeah. Nathan Roberts in the house. I got Janae. Mm. What's, what's your last name again? Johnson. Johnson. Janae Johnson. <laughs> Okay, cool. Now we will, you guys are welcome to the show. Hi, how you doing, Mr. Dan? How's oh, it going? Oh, great. Wonderful. 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 Having a great to day. Be here, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> man. Sure. Yeah, this is a. Uh, ooh, it's it's been a long time coming. How you guys feeling today? I'm feeling great. Yeah, I'm wonderful. I'm doing great. Doing pretty good. Cool. Right. So, uh, Mr. Dan Smith, just give us a little background about. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who's Mr. Dan Smith? So, um, I grew up uh, Kansas City, 33rd and Jackson. Okay. Uh, born and raised in Kansas City. Uh, played basketball, football. Uh, graduated from Bishop Hogan High School. Okay. That is, that was the the private school. Now it's a charter school. So we got to make that distinction. Now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing. It's a yeah. Thing. Um, and I went to school. I went to UMKC. Okay. Um, didn't finish at UMKC. I end up. Uh, I started a business when I was uh, twenty. Okay. And end up rocking that business for about four years. Okay. And yeah, so started entrepreneurship. Dang. And, and I, I went back to school eventually and got my degree and, and ended up getting my master's degree as well. But um, yeah, man, just, you know, just, yeah. just out here working, trying to figure life out. That's Cause, it. Because I mean, I've seen you like on every event I went to. And, I know. Uh, isn't that, isn't that yeah, horrible? every event isn't I go to, you, to you, 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 you out there like just like kicking like, it. Yeah. What is but, this guy doing? No, you you always out there. Okay, so Nathan, since the mic is right next to you, you can like uh, go real quick. So Nathan, I know you. We're taking a couple classes together. Uh, you're like in real estate. Like, give, just give people a little bit of background. Who is Nathan Roberts? And okay. Like, you know, you know how how did you come so far? Uh, so my name is Nathan Roberts. I uh, was born and raised in Columbia, Missouri. Came up here uh, to study economics originally. Uh, decided that that wasn't the career path that I wanted to go into. Yeah. I actually read this book called uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad at yeah. 17. It's essentially a mind-changing book. It, it makes book. you view financial literacy in a different way. Okay. And ever since I read that book, I've I just been so uh, infatuated with real estate. So okay. uh, right now, I'm currently a real estate consultant with eXp Realty. So I help uh, investors acquire and dispose of investment properties. So okay. uh, that is me in a nutshell. Mr. Janae, Ms. Janae Johnson, she is, uh, she actually pitched our Shark Tank, right? I did. Damn, she about to get that money, money. She about to get that money, money. So let people know uh, about yourself, about your company, and you know, how, how you got this far. Let, let's know, let people know. So, of course, I'm Janae, and welcome, welcome. I'm from Chicago. I'm that kid from Chicago, and yeah. I came to Kansas City on an athletic scholarship. Okay. And in the midst of it, what brought me to this school was the fact that it's one of the only colleges that allow you to in entrepreneurship yeah. at the mm -hmm. undergrad level. So, in the midst of that, I was accepted into the East College program at the beginning of last year, January. Oh, okay. And then from then, Congrats. that's when I've just been rolling downhill with the company. Dang. Okay. So tell us a little bit about, about your company and your idea. Uh, let us know a little about that because I really I'm really interested in hearing about like what what is the thing that actually started your vision in that company. Oh, absolutely. So my company is called Interplay, and we're working towards automating pet interaction by providing okay. dog owners with an automated dog crate that will allow them to operate it from their smartphone. Dang. So dog owners will be able to see their dog, talk to their dog, dispense food and water to their dog, and open and close it from their phone while they're away from home. Oh my God! Dang! 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 Okay, I feel I feel a little. I feel a little bit I like got I'm two dogs, so <laughs> and that are crated at home during the day. So, you know what I mean? Yes. So that would be a, yeah. a huge benefit for us. That, that's crazy. Dang, dang, you you were definitely that's smart, true. smarter than everyone this day. But dang, that's that's super Heck cool. Yeah. yeah, that is dope. Oh. So, Mr. Dan Smith, um, just a little so, bit about um, Porter KC. What is the vision behind it, and what are you trying to do? Yeah, with it? so we started the Porterhouse KC about three years ago, a little over three years ago, and init initially. We just, first of all, entrepreneurship is about um, finding a problem and solving that problem, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we saw was there was this lack of uh, resources that were coming to the communities that we come from, that mm -hmm. I come from. Yeah. And we wanted to basically just bridge gaps, right? We wanted to see how we can get resources that are in one area yeah. over to the areas that, are, that, that really need them. Um, and so we started with uh, education, right? Okay. So like, that's kind of like the basis, right? Yeah. We wanted to um, create a forum that folks can come to uh, for free yeah. in the evening, have food mm. and get 
workshop style education mm. from professionals, consummate professionals in yeah. our community. Also, it's, it's a process, right? Like you never like really um, get to a point where, I mean, you, you can get to a point where you find it, mm. but it, it spirals out. Like you can find one why, and before you know it, that one why is like a tree. It gives mm. you more branches exactly. and you branch out. Right? But you know, you know, the thing is, you know, we have a lot of, um, there's a lot of sexy terms and, and, and things that are used to define people and us yeah. and, and, and what value is and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, defining your why, like mm -hmm. that's new, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. What's, what's, what's defining your, new, True. your, your why? True, yeah. And you think if you ask Damon John or if you ask uh, Mark Cuban or if mm -hmm. you ask uh, Jay-Z, if you ask uh, Dame, da Dame, 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 Dame Dash, you know, you ask these guys what their why is, yeah. um, they're going to ask you to define their why for mm. them. What does it look like? Mm. What does my why look yeah. like? You know? So we'll take a, uh, about maybe a three minute break uh, and then we'll come back and then we'll talk about, I haven't even talked about my why because yeah, I've been asking questions, but I want to talk about my why too. Sure. And I want us to dive deeper into like uh, strengths and weaknesses because I think that's like a, a really important subject we need to touch on and then we can touch up on like maybe some Deontay Wilder and Fury oh, fight hey. that, that happened this weekend. You know, oh, you know, hey, get, sure. get that gist in. But um, let's take a three minute break and um, we'll be right back. Just you guys stay tuned. Uh, we'll be right back in three minutes. All right. All right, guys. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back to the show. We had a good time, a good break. We talked about a lot. We actually didn't want to start back the show because it was so good out uh -oh. here. But uh, <laughs> but we're back here. Um, so let's get back into it. So we were talking about the why and like being able to discover what your purpose is and being able to know um, what, what is the reason why you do what you do. And I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about my wife a little bit because like we're here today because, you know, Fight Up KC is an organization on campus that we basically want to inspire students to become leaders, inspiring people to pursue their purpose and be able to know that your value is not in something, it's in who you are. Like It's on the inside. It's not somewhere you go to or a degree you hold. It's actually on you developing yourself. True. Um, I think I read a book. It's, I think it's like uh, 12 Pillars. And it basically says that you, uh, you work hard on yourself and you work on your job. You know, give more service than you get paid for, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that, like the mindset of being able to give more than you receive, right? Absolutely. So now, um, like let's uh, let's dive a little bit uh, deeper into uh, talking about strengths and weaknesses. Now, one of my mentors, John Maxwell, you might know him. He's like mm -hmm. a, a leadership guru. Mm -hmm. um, he has this mindset of like where he says that um, the reason why most people don't succeed is because they focus so much on their um, on the weaknesses, mm -hmm. right? He says that if you are a three in doing math and you work hard, you might become a five. That's average. Mm -hmm. No one pays for a five. But let's say you are a seven and uh, you're telling jokes, you're a comedian and you're seven. You pull, you pull a lot of work and become a nine or a ten. People pay for a nine and ten, right? You become a superstar. Mm -hmm. So now, what do you guys think about weaknesses and being able to focus more on either on your weakness or your strengths? That's dope. Mm -hmm. I like that. I love to hear you guys' perspective first. Uh, I, I guess it kind of goes back on the, the, the topic of being a jack of all trades, but yeah. being a master of none. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have all of these different... If you have strengths and weakness and you try, you already have strengths and you're trying to uh, increase your weaknesses to make those strengths, yeah. it, it, it doesn't work out because mm -hmm. you can lose focus of your other strengths. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I think you kind of have to find what your strengths are and then just go all at it. Try to increase those as much as you can because yeah. you can work on your weaknesses. I mean, if it's very low, like let's just put it on a scale of one to 10. If mm -hmm. your weakness is at a three, I mean, you can get it up to a five, but don't yeah. try to get that weakness up to a 10. Yeah. It's, it's just not realistic. Yeah, yeah. What do you think today? I think you can use your strengths to strengthen your weaknesses. Mm, so mm, you, can, mm. you can build up your strengths and use that as a way to increase your weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. So when I think hear that, I think of a quote somebody told me, one mm. of my mentors, they said, do what you do best and hire the rest. So mm. you can become really good at what you do and mm. then find other people that are good at what they do or yeah. the weaknesses that you lack yeah. and that will Help. Now that's a CEO mindset yep. right there. That's 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 that yeah. CEO mindset. That's yeah. an entrepreneur mindset Absolutely. right there. Hit Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Let us know. I got nothing. That was it right there. <laughs> <laughs> she dropped the mic. She dropped the mic. He's like, yeah, boss right. move, boss move. Just hide people you can't no, do it. I love that. <laughs> now I uh actually so I've read Rich Dad Poor Dad. Um the E Myth Master. I don't know if you've ever heard of the E Myth. Yeah, that's a good book. Uh but I actually just got done with uh, Kevin Hart's book. Uh, mm, it's, 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 it's like his autobiography type thing. And uh, he was talking about doubling down and in investing. So first of all, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk says the same thing. He, okay. he, he me, lives yeah. by that same, you know, that same, uh, you know, forget your fears. Don't worry about your weaknesses yeah. and, and, and just rock out on all your strengths. Mm, mm. Uh, but uh, Kevin Hart was talking about his transition from 
what when he first started in, in uh, stand up to where he is now, like, and and what was the difference between uh, him becoming a superstar yeah. and him just being a comedian, mm, you know? Mm. And it was that it was he was worried about a lot of his weaknesses mm. and trying to focus on trying to you know build those weaknesses. Uh, instead of just doubling down on who he was yeah, as a person, exactly, yes, you know, yes, yes, and yes. he kept trying to tell jokes mm. instead of talking about his life, mm. right? And I, you, you can YouTube some of his old stuff, yeah, and you'll see that he's literally trying to tell jokes, mm. right, to get people to laugh. Mm. Versus now, and he uses his life, yeah, yeah, as his <laughs> jokes, as his experience, oh. and so he was just talking about that. But it was a really, it was a long. Yeah. I actually got the audio book, and mm. it was like maybe nine, 10 hours, so it was yeah. pretty long. Um, yeah. But it was good, man, but it yeah. was good. I mean, Kevin Hart is like inspirational in its own yeah. like, like the thing is this, I, I, I've I been following Kevin Hart since Africa. Like I've been following Kevin Hart since I was in Africa, bro. Yeah. Like running with no shoes, yeah. this is okay. Kevin Hart. Okay. You know what I mean? But anyway, okay. that's, that's what I said. But like, you know, like seeing him where he's at today, cause back in those days, no one believed in him. They used right. to call him like the, um, the fake, uh, Chris Tucker, mm -hmm. but no, not Chris Tucker. What is the other guy? What is mm -hmm. the other? Um, there's Dave Chappelle. There's... No, there's, 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 a, there's another skinny guy, uh, Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Okay, okay. Chris okay. Rock. They had all that joke about him, yeah. you know. But he kept pushing. He kept yeah. pushing his um, his content. And now he's the biggest. He's the biggest in the whole yeah. world, like. Yeah. And now people are coming onto, you know, yeah. what he got going Absolutely. on. And I believe that also um, has to do with you know having tenacity and being able to persevere, even though people don't believe in what you what you're doing. Absolutely. Now. Going into that aspect of being able to uh, persevere where people don't believe in who you are, have you guys have any setbacks and people who are around you saying, you know, this is not going to work out. Why even go in that direction? No one is doing that. Why do you think you're going to be the one to make it happen? I just, I, I got a different perspective when it comes to, because that kind of lends to like yeah. haters and lends to like doubters and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't even pay attention to that stuff. Mm, mm, right? Mm, like... Mm. I don't even, to me, that's like white noise. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, I'm sure there's people out there that really don't like what we're doing. I'm mm. sure there's people out there that don't feel like we're qualified to do what mm. we're doing. I'm sure that there's people out there that feel like that they could be doing a better job at yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. I'm sure that that's the case, right? Yeah. But I don't, I don't care. Mm, mm, you know what I mean? Mm, like it's hard to get to that point, yeah, right? Where you yeah, just don't care. Yeah. But I'm kind of we've we've been through that, mm, you know, and mm. and and, it, and it's taken a while. I've actually been that way, you know, the majority of my adult life, yeah. like really just doing me exactly, and, and, yeah. and surrounding myself with people that uh, that I love and that love me. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, Unconditionally, yeah. unless yeah. just we're willing to work together and mm -hmm. grind together. So. I really don't see that. Mm. I don't really worry about negative and naysayers. Some mm. people thrive in that. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah, they use yeah. that as motivation yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It just doesn't do anything for me. Mm. Mm. I, it doesn't matter. That's, I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. That's a cool perspective. That's yeah. that's a really cool perspective. What, what, what do you guys think about naysayers? I've had, uh, had it on both ends. So in mm. terms of basketball mm. and with uh, my company growing mm. out. So in basketball, I was always kind of the one that was overlooked. Uh, people would just, they would always put people ahead of me. But I never really thought nothing of it. I just used mm. it, as you said, as mm. motivation. Like, I was just so focused on my craft that I didn't let the outside noise affect what I believed in myself. Yeah. And then in terms of the company, how many of us heard of Doorbot? Mm. Right? Mm. That's ring. Mm. So Dorbot went on Shark Tank, but mm. nobody invested in him. Mm. But now they're ring. So mm. if he listened to him, they were if you watch the Shark Tank episode, they were mm. clowning him. They was mm. clowning their ideas. Mm. Mm. But now it's ring. And now they brought him back on the show, gave him a standing ovation of pause, and now he's one of the investors on the panel. Mm. So it's really what you do with it. Whoa, yeah, yeah. dang. Hit us, hit us. I saw it. So, yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm just gonna pair it with real estate. I, I feel like there's a lot of people out there that think that you shouldn't buy buy and hold uh, properties. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would say those are the naysayers. The people that don't actually know much about the industry mm -hmm. are the ones that are the haters. The ones mm -hmm. that they don't want you to go into it, mm -hmm. or they have a friend or a family member mm -hmm. that has gotten into real estate. They mm -hmm. weren't successful. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they didn't they didn't take the knowledge of, of reading books or finding a mentor or yeah. there. I mean, there's there there's resources out there that can help you mm -hmm. learn about real estate. They yeah. didn't take that. They didn't take that extra step. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people simply aren't successful because yeah. they're not willing to do 
what other people are not willing to do. Mm, so damn. Man, now coming to that, cause like you know, there's no way you be on earth and you do something. No one is gonna say like, yeah, that's good. Everyone, there's always gonna be a group of people who think you are doing something dumb. You know what I mean? Like even with like Elon Musk. Let me give you, and, and also let me give you this perspective. So yeah. like when I I grew up, my mom uh, worked in uh, in, in uh, uh, social service. Mm. Um, she uh, career, you know, got her degree from Northwest, went straight into social service, did her thing. My grandfather worked in a, the uh, post office. Mm. Uh, all his, the majority of his his, his uh, life that I've you know been a part of. Yeah. Uh, my little brother is an educator. My wife is an educator. So everybody are they are, like everybody around me are uh, in like career exactly. focused yeah. fields, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then you look at me, mm. and I'm all about entrepreneurship. Yeah. And I'm all about doing different. Yeah. I'm all about being you know trying yeah. to take chances and yeah. risk and all that other stuff yeah and so imagine me coming home even when i was 20 mm. i told my mom i wanted to start this business mm. right i wanted mm. to it, it was a make ready business yeah right we were cleaning uh apartment comp apart, apartments for other people to to move into and it was section eight so it was nasty yeah, right damn. and i came home i was like mom i want to do this you know i need you know and, and mom's was just kind of looking at me like, what? Like, what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're in school. Don't worry about it. You know yeah, what I mean? Don't worry about yeah, that stuff. Yeah. And not that she was being a hater or anything yeah. like that. She just, it's not understood, right? Exactly. You just don't understand. Yeah, yeah. And so I ended up taking <laughs> the cleaning supplies out from under my mom's uh, cabinets mm. to to start our business, Dang. right? That's what we used wow. on the first few apartments before we actually started getting money, getting paid uh, to be able to actually use our own supplies and replenish, you know, my mom's supplies. True. But uh, but it's just a mis it's it's a, it's a it's a lack of understanding. Too. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. People don't know where you come mm. from. They don't know your background. They don't mm. know your story, right? Mm. But they know they what they see on the outside, mm. right? And they see what you're doing, like with your business or mm. playing basketball or you in real estate. They don't know what your perspectives is. Yeah. Like I ask you, you know, the work life balance question, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, work life, ah, come on, yeah. And then you're like, yeah, my mom worked nights. Mm. and wasn't able to really be at some of the games and things. So there's a deep, deeper meaning to your purpose yeah. and why you say work-life balance, yeah. right? Yeah. So I might not understand what that looks like or what mm. that means, but you have a deeper meaning. There's a purpose behind it, right? Mm. Yeah. And so I could be looked at as a hater if I was like, dude, like work-life balance, what do you mean? Like that yeah. doesn't make sense, like stop that. And then you're like, yeah, my mom worked at nights and wasn't, there, wasn't, wasn't able to be there as much as we want. Okay, you shut me down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, and, and, and with you with starting a business, like I could be, you know, saying whatever I want to say, and then you have perspective, and you have another purpose, another exactly. meaning behind it, mm -hmm. and then it's just so it's more of a misunderstanding or a mm -hmm. lack of understanding, yeah. And those individuals not wanting to get to know you for mm -hmm. and, and, and your purpose, mm -hmm. but it's not, you know, oh well, it's not there. Yeah, because I mean, the truth is, like, actually, the people who some people who actually tell you this is a mean well for you, right? Yeah. They're not like hey. It's actually want to like yeah. mm -hmm. make sure you succeed. Yeah. It's just that they think they know you, but they don't really know right. who you are. Because like right. there's there's a you that people know, and there's another you that you have you don't even know. Right. And Absolutely. that's the you you want to get to. But then if Absolutely. you keep listening to people around you, they're telling you what you should do. You never get to that. You only become the person they know. Right. Absolutely. If I believe that we all need you know a team of people who believe in what we're doing, even though there might be some people say no. But we need a team of people who actually believe in what we are doing I don't to know. see further. I don't know. What do you think? I know it's your show. <laughs> I don't want to. No, you good. No, you be up. You be up. But this is the thing. Nobody will really truly understand you yeah. and your focus. Now, people are, uh, will will help you because they know you and they have love for you. Yes, yes. But that vision and that dream and mm. that focus mm. is a totally different perspective. Mm. So you can't expect people to really fully understand you, mm. and you can't want them to fully understand yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jordan had a a dire need. Mm to be mm. who he became. Yeah. Mm. Nobody around him would understand him going to the gym at midnight mm. to shoot a free throw mm. or to mm. shoot three point shots. Mm. Right? Mm. Like yeah. and it's not his so and and it's two sided, right? Yeah. yeah. It's not his obligation to teach them or yeah. to, to try to get them to understand. 
as well as it's not their obligation to understand. Yeah. Right? True. He has to live in him mm. and what his goals are. True. So at the end of the day, you might have some people that are willing to unlock that door for mm, you, mm, right? Mm. So you need somebody to open the gym up for you. Yeah. Mm. But you can't get them to come in there. You, mm. you can't require them mm. to come in there and shoot ball with you Ooh, because that's exactly. not their vision. Ooh. That's your vision. Ooh. That's your purpose. Ooh, that, you know that, I mean? that, that preach right there. You need people to open the door for you, but yeah. they can't come in with you sometimes. Yeah. You got to yeah. leave them. 100%. I think it reminds me of like the, the Bible story of like, I think it was like, uh, um, I think it was, Abraham, when he was mm. taking Isaac to the mountain, mm. right? He had to let the people mm. stay below mm -hmm. the mountain. He had to go with uh, Isaac to Absolutely. the top, right? Absolutely. Sometimes you'll leave some people on and then go to the top. Absolutely. Now, what is you guys' perspective about being able to have maybe people in your corner um, being able to motivate you or you think, like uh, Mr. Dan said, you got to go for yourself and be able to, you know, discover who you are or you need people to, like, be able to push you up. What do you think? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I guess uh, <laughs> me being in sports and being involved uh, in sports for the entirety of my life. Yeah. Of course, you can't do it by yourself. Yeah, I've seen yeah. it. I've tried. Trust and believe. I'm an independent woman mm -hmm. trying to do it by myself. But mm -hmm. I do feel you always need that support of people to keep you going. If True. you get to a point like where well, you like, I can't do this no more, yeah. it does take a team to do it. And you do need those supporters and motivators to keep pushing you through. Yeah. And you also need those people to help you get in the door, mm -hmm. as we talked about. Mm -hmm. People who mm -hmm. will put you in touch with others to help mm -hmm. you provide you with those connections, resources, mm -hmm. and networking mm -hmm. that you need to get to the next level. Kobe <laughs> told Shaq, Shaq told Kobe, there's no I in team. He said, Mm. Kobe mm. said there's an mm. M and an mm. E mm. in team. Mm. So here we go. No, I'm just <laughs> I just saw that the other day. So like, that was dope. Oh, buddy, that is dope. <laughs> right, right. Like it is. Uh, wait, I think I, I think another I don't know who said I think it was uh 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 Michael Jordan, he mm. also had another quote. He said, like, I think Kobe said, there, something said, like, there's no I in team, mm. but there's an I in win. Yeah. Right? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's like, we going to win, right? Legit. Let us go. Uh, I, I would say this kind of relates to, uh, I guess, being, like, self-made. So there's, mm. there's a lot of people out there that claim that they're self-made, but I feel like you always need people to lean on. You always yeah. need those resources. You don't have all, you don't have all the resources. Yeah, you don't true. have all the answers. Yeah. So you always need those people that can actually motivate you even more. Mm. Obviously, it starts with your inner self. If you mm. don't have the motivation to wake up every day and do mm. what you do, mm. you're not going to be successful. Mm. So you can have people around you support mm. you to bring you up and uplift mm. you. But it starts with yourself. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Actually, oh, cool. Look, 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 look at that. It starts with, it you. Starts with you, baby. We, 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 we on the gun. We on the up. gun. It has to start with you, right? The, the why doesn't come from outside. Now, Mr. Dan, yes. sitting right across students who are on campus or who are still in school, trying to, um, you know, be entrepreneurs and be leaders in, in Kansas City or be leaders in the world. Um, what, what can you tell them, like face to face? What do you think you can tell them from your experience? Shoot. Shoot. Like, like, I, so on the show, I'm starting to sweat. I wasn't sweating. <laughs> and now I'm starting to sweat a little bit. So on, on the show, I always have a part where I, I tell someone to say something they will tell to their 21, 21, 21 year old self. Yeah. But now you are in front of that. You right, tell them right, right here. Right. You tell me right here. Right, we, right. We, we waited for you to give Goodness us the juice. Gracious. <laughs> um, you know, I would say, first and foremost, because like you said, I, I mean, I, I talking to myself when yeah. I was you guys' age. Uh, my focus was on trying to um, trying to impress others, mm, mm, right? Mm. And trying to figure out ways to impress others. And that went to like, from after I finished school to corporate America, my whole goal was to impress others because mm. I thought that that is what was going to put me in the places that I wanted to be in, mm, right? Mm. Um, but I quickly learned that um, that's not the case. Mm. And so you live one life what do you do with that life that you live? Yeah. You're gonna be fake, mm. be somebody else, mm. put on, or you're just gonna be living your authentic you. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. Mm. And so, if I could talk to myself, my 20 year old, 19 year old self, right. I would tell myself to be you authentically. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. Learn as much as you can, Yeah. absorb as much as possible, mm. Um, with the intention to break all the rules. Yeah, damn. Would be you. Mm, mm. Do it being you. Man, adding to that, um, adding to being able to, uh, you have one life to live, right? Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart has this thing where he says, he's like, your life is like a book, mm -hmm. right? When you are all said and done, mm -hmm. 
what is your book going to be about when people yeah, open it? Absolutely. When they open that page, what is it going to yeah. be about? Right, yeah. and I have a famous quote that Linda knows about. It's my my best uh -oh. quote ever. Um, uh -oh. Is this so, Twitter? Is this, it's is this not good. Twitter, Twitter, uh... it's, it's a whole different one. Oh, it's, okay. a, it's a whole different okay. one. It's a whole different okay. one. So okay. the quote goes this way, right? It, it says it's from um, Miles Monroe. Like Miles, he's like my uh, mentor, but he's he passed away. But he says that um, the most valuable place on earth is not Beverly Hills. It's not the all you was in the Middle East, right? It's the graveyards where mm -hmm. people with potentials, mm -hmm. books, music died with all their potential and never actually actualized it. They never brought the book out. They never made the music because they were afraid of what people would think about 100%. them. Now he asks this question, will you also steal from us? Would you rob us of your gifts and mm. die with all you have in you? Mm. Now you exactly. decide, do you want to die empty yeah. or die with everything you got? Right? So you either run run from your, your purpose or actually go out there and take risks. Right? right. I think Will Smith was talking about jumping out of an airplane a couple mm. years ago. Mm. He jumped out of a plane, and he was just talking about his perspective. He said, God placed the most beautiful things on earth on the other side of fear, mm. right? Mm. So mm. if you are fearing these things, mm. it won't happen. You won't see that beauty. Mm. You won't see what the fruits of those labors look like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're yeah. scared and fearful, mm. you have to live in it. You got to live in it fear. This is right here. Mm. This is fear for mm. me, right? Mm. Like I've always used to be, I used to be self-conscious of, of, mm. of talking in front of people, yeah. saying the right things, yeah. not knowing what to say, mm -hmm. being prepared, having my mm. notes, stumbling over words. Mm. I used to do all of that, mm. right? Mm. But when I got that perspective of yeah. living outside of fear, mm. you know, you saw me. I just did that panel. The other yeah, day. yeah, uh, yeah. You, you were out there killing the panel. Like you, you were, know, you were the fun. juice. You were the fun. juice because I, I can feel it. Like you yeah. were comfortable. It wasn't like anything for you. Yeah, it was you know? fun. <laughs> you know? And then afterwards, we did a big selfie. Yeah, thing, you know? <laughs> so it was cool. That's awesome. Okay, now we have uh, the serious question. Time is over. Um, but now let's dive into the Tyson figure fight. The, Tyson Fury and um, Deontay Wilder fight. Mm -hmm. what, okay. what was your guys' perspective about that fight? Because uh, I was, I was, I don't want to curse, but um, I was close to punching the wall that night because uh -oh. I, I was driving around like Westport looking for a place to watch this. Oh, game. Wow. I'm, I'm a really fight, like I'm a fan of like fighting, and like, yeah. and Deontay Wilder was like, you know, I like the way he punches, yeah. but like the way he was be being beat up, I felt like I was being beat up. So I was like, what is going on? Like he was just being knocked really, around. Really you know? internalized. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I was. Oh, Snap. I was I'm, on my good. snap. I was just like, yo, my guy is coming up because he had like the whole outfit. I'm like, yeah. yo, it's about to be fire. Did you hear that he said because he wore that? It, I'm like, oh, go, go sleep. Over. Like, yeah. go to bed. Like, what do you mean? Who who made you wear that? Like, what do you right. mean? Right. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but I heard. <laughs> I yeah, I heard, I heard that in the news. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's like, hey, yeah, but you, you chose that. Like, you right. literally like hyped it up. Like, but yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a boxing fan. I would say in the sport of boxing, there's those that are out there that are fighters and then you're a boxer. Mm -hmm. The ones that go down as the best in history, that they aren't, they, I mean, they're fighters. They have a fighter mindset, but they're boxers. Mm -hmm. Look at Mayweather. Mayweather's a swifty guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's... Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going in the ring. He's trying yeah. to defend his, uh, I mean, punches coming at yeah, him. But, yeah. I mean, he's a boxer. Yeah. People that fight against him, they lose because they're they're, they're yeah. throwing all their power yeah, at him. Yeah. If you're a boxer and you have that trained mindset to where you're supposed to be weaving and keeping that technique perfect, mm. that's how you become well. Mm. I mean, Deontay Wilder, yeah. he's one of my top top five for sure, yeah, but yeah, yeah. he's a fighter. He's not a boxer. Yeah. Like, he's not a boxer. He lacks he, he certain brawls, skills. He yeah, brawl. He's a brawler. Yeah. He wants to knock you exactly. out, right? Yeah. Well, he wants to, like, knock you out. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. My only perspective is uh, he got beat up. <laughs> 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 uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Like, he got the worst chance of it, but I saw the uh -oh. other guy. And he yeah. Like, he, 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 he got beat up. He got, I mean, hey. No offense, Deontay, but you got beat up. Like oh, honestly, man. you got because I was surprised. That's not Shots what I. Fired. That's that's no, not what right. I. That's not what I was expecting going to fight. But anyways, um, that being the case. Right. But yeah, right. but like, right. but like, like Deontay, because I think he has like that, like you know, that heavy right right hit, yeah. and um, he's not like a really technical like. Cause he wasn't even defending the fight. I was like, "Yo, you got two he hands. You got two hands." But you know, you you look at if you look at at heavyweight boxers though. Mm. In, in in the history of, of of I mean I mean I'm not going you know too far back yeah. but the you know if you look at Tyson if you look at Muhammad Ali if you look at at at, at these guys that were great George Foreman I mean they had they had technique mm. 
But a lot of heavyweight fighters want to fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah. want to brawl. Like, yeah. 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 It's ver you know, versus, like you said, Mayweather. Like, Mayweather is, you know, they have to be a lot more technical. They're yeah. a lot mm -hmm. faster. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? There's so many more pieces or intricacies that come into us that, that, that ring when you're yeah. like 130-something pounds or whatever, 140 <laughs> yeah. pounds. Yeah, like lightweight, you know lightweight, lightweight. Like, it's a different perspective. Yeah. I mean, all right, we'll come to the end of the show. This is Fight Up Casey, man. Thank, thank you guys for tuning in today. But before Imagine. we go, before we go, where can we catch you at? Where can we catch you at? Oh, uh, <laughs> you can go there. Uh, Theporterhousekc.com is our, our, our website. My You can reach me. My contact information is there, but... My email address is uh, Daniel dot C okay. no Daniel C Smith at okay. Outlook .com. Okay. Uh, my phone number is on the website. Like literally, it'll ring my phone. So okay. just holler. At me. And you're on LinkedIn as well as LinkedIn, 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 Instagram as well, Instagram, Facebook, everything. Oh. All right, cool, Dan Smith. Stuff. What about yeah. you, Nathan? Ah, uh, yeah. So you can find my real estate group, uh, Lifted Realty Group. You can search it on Instagram. You can search it on Facebook. Literally, we're out there on platforms. So right. Nathan, Lifted Realty, Realty Group. Well. Uh, you can catch me, uh, uh, company name on Instagram is Go Interplay, Twitter Go Interplay 1, and uh, website is GoInterplay.com. So check it out, reach out, hit me up. And you guys need to go watch our game. Like, she be, she be balling. I was like, oh, yeah, I gotta go to the game. Yeah, 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 she be on fire. Like, oh, yeah, like women's <laughs> But hey, um, oh, man, happens. shout out to Lyndon. Um, shout out to my guy, Terrell, in the, in the back. Block man, thank you yeah. guys for yeah. the team uh, right here, man. Thank you guys for today. Thank you guys for coming in today. Thank you guys for tuning in today. For the hey, um, sub, uh, subscribe, find up KC, and we got more juice coming. And also, we got the ships KC coming up tomorrow. Show up if you can. And hey, thank you guys for today. I'll see you guys next time. And bye. Stay fired up and continue to pursue your, pursue your purpose. But for now, fire bye. it up. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> hey, what up? This is Dan Schmidt, Porterhouse KC. Make sure you subscribe right here. Subscribe. Fire <laughs> it up.